So, yeah, this is uh, presentation. I'm sorry. Actually, it was so sorry. So, um, are you able to see now? So you will have to share your screen. Uh, it is not yet begun uh, sharing the screen. So, so now it's okay, Amelia. Yeah, yeah, we can see it now. So uh, today I'm going to tell uh, mechanical supports for mechanical complications of acute MI. And uh, <clears throat> if you see the cardiothoracic surgery, it's been a lot of, uh, most of the things are confined to the thorax. And when the patient develops acute MI, most of the time, the, either it's the chest pain, maybe because of dyspepsia or acute MI or because of the dissection. And uh, once uh, you have found out this is a problem of heart, then you know the anatomy, it's a, it, it affects as a acute uh, MI mechanical complications. It either affects the mitral valve or the ventricular septal defect or the, the wall of So, and dressing uh, the heart failure, these patients, they go into lenoxin or unload the horse with less. But nowadays, the treatments are either get a new horse means do a transplant, get a new tractor means put a ventricular assist device or heal the horse with mitra clip or other uh, things. Most of the people, they are aware with the balloon pump. Balloon pump supports only 15% uh, of the cardiac output. Tandem heart and impella, they support 30 to 60% of the cardiac output. And the devices, uh, the permanent devices, heart mid 2, 3 heart, where they support 100%, uh, but they support only circulatory support. The ECMO supports heart as well as lung. But they, again, the ECMO is an extracorporeal support. So uh, that is used for a few days to a few weeks. Uh, I'm coming back to the main topic of mechanical complication. Either it's a mitral regurgitation or a ventricular septal rupture or LV aneurysm. So the mitral, uh, mitral regurgitation develops either because of the rupture of the cordy or because of the dilatation of the ventricle or because of the stiffness of the ventricle. The ventricle wall is not moving so the leaflets cannot come closer to each other. And when you do an echo on this, there is a florid mitral regurgitation. You need to replace the mitral valve. And, uh, or it is a ventricular septal uh, defect, whether it's in the distal part or in the mid part or in the basal part. So this is an um, example of a, a pical ventricular septal rupture where you can see the blood is, and the, with the Doppler, you can see the blood is flowing from LV to RV. And... Uh, when this ventricular septal, uh, any acute MI happens, most of the times in the beginning, the ventricle remains the same size, only stiff, but within a week, it starts dilating and within three months, it becomes uh, a balloon shape that is called a ventricular aneurysm, basically. And uh, in the beginning, it is dyskinetic, means it does not move along with the ventricular contraction. It comes out as if out pouching or it could be akinetic, that it's not moving at all. <clears throat> The normal ventricle looks like good, but when it's a dilated ventricle, it's uh, you need to be very careful. You need to give some mechanical support because with the only inotropes or uh, treating the patient whether bypass surgery is not gonna, it's not sufficient basically. So uh, I'm gonna show you one of the patients uh, this LV aneurysm because this uh, this is this patient is from another country because in Nepal or. Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, where the medical management is not there are less medical facilities. These patients, they develop mitral uh, MI. And then after they don't know and they survive that. And after again, then they develop MI and they come to the con in country like India. And you see with the, along with the coronary disease, they also have a well-formed 
uh, ventricular aneurysm that is a complications of uh, MI. So I cut the LV aneurysm and you can see this is most of the ventricle is already cut. So, and you can see the spicules inside because there's a lot of calcification. And when we tried to close it, we could not close because it looks like a pot shape that you, when you have made a hole in the pot, you cannot bring it closure. So what we did was uh, we used a double value Dacron patch with the filaprop foroproline sutures and uh, used it. And with that with the patch, uh, we closed this and uh, then brought this patch closure. Uh, closure to each other and the ventricular cavity was reformed and ejection fraction from 15 to improve to 30 and uh, the patient uh, was on IABP and then uh, for after three days IABP was removed and after 10 days patient was discharged to home. The another similar kind of aneurysm which developed in the ventricular apex and it uh, ruptured the papillary muscles also. So it was ventricular aneurysm as well as uh, mitral valve regurgitation because papillary muscles were completely <clears throat> uh, torn. So this patient, we did a ventricular aneurysm repair as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide along with this Maricon XL2 sutures with mitral valve replacement with mechanical valve because tissue valve replacing in such kind of condition. Sometimes the prongs, they may get attached to the inflamed wall and they may rupture the wall. So, And uh, uh, because nowadays we used to use a 40cc balloon, but with a 50cc mega balloon, the cardiac, the circulatory support can increase from 15 to 20 to 25 percent, so 5 to 10 percent more. So you can give more support to these patients. Uh, in after doing this procedure because most of the patients they they require mechanical support in the beginning post surgery to or even before the surgery to improve the clinical condition of the patient when the inotrope requirement is high we can also use uh, tandem heart or we can also use impella impella 5 liter is done by the surgeon um, and the 2.5 is most of the time done in the cath lab by the cardiologist. And uh, this is mainly used in the left ventricle, but we can use in the right ventricle also. When in most of the time, it's when you put a ventricle, left ventricle assist device and the RV is not working, you can use this uh, impella as a right ventricular support. Or if the patient already has left ventricular support and the right ventricle is not giving enough blood, so you can use uh, this uh, as a bivad also for the support uh, by the cardiologist uh, and for the surgeons if you see this uh, in the covid times what the new thing which we have seen what we have learned from the covid most of the times in the last 20 years 15 the 30 years those were intensivists when you put the patient on ventilator, the patient, most of the time, they get better from what they were before. In COVID, the problem is when you intubate the patient, most of the patient, they crash and they die and you cannot control that. So many times you have to put the patient on ECMO with, without intubating the patient because patient will crash. So, and the, another problem, because this is a pro-coagulant state, this corona period, I would say, this, those patients who get affected with the COVID. This procoagulant state leads to pulmonary uh, clots or the coronary clots. And many patients with MI, they come with the COVID lungs <clears throat> along with uh, myocardial infarction. Because they are, they, they, even the 60 or 70% block in the coronary when your, when your blood is, pro is more uh, in the coagulable state, then more chances to become a embolus uh, and the patient develops MI. If you see the CT of such kind of patients, then you see this is a typical corona pictures and, and you need to put the patient on uh, ECMO. The, either it's a VA ECMO or VV ECMO, depending upon you require support for heart, lung, or both the organs. This is how it, the machine looks like and it is get ready to be wheeled from the operation theater. As I mentioned, it can be used for the cardiac, respiratory, or cardiorespiratory purpose. 
in the intervention uh, cardiology they, they it can be used for multi vessel pci or the large infarct uh, vessel area when you're going to put a stenting then you may require percutaneous support uh, we put it and do the uh, angioplasty or uh, ballooning only to save the patient and then once the patient is better then you can go for another permanent therapies it's a veno venous or veno arterial and uh, this is veno venous and uh, this is veno arterial. You have to put a two cannulas, one artery, one vein, and another into the anterior femoral area. Yeah, so, so, and this is how it looks like bedside. You have put one cannula into the groin, another into the neck, which we usually do most of the time. And this are, these are the... Uh, cannulas which we put uh, and the saturation comes up, heart rate gets stable, your saturation comes to 96, 98 and blood pressure, the inotropes, they come down. We can also use in the neck, but the problem with the puncturing the carotid is you may have the chances of stroke. So you don't want to put in the, and the another advantage of on ECMO is nowadays you can Dialysis, you don't have to connect to the patient. You can connect to the ECMO circuit and the patient can be dialyzed without putting extra cannula into the patient. And uh, this is one of the patients. We patient was on IABP. We had to put the patient on ECMO and then brought to our center. And we uh, finally, we could not wean off and we put the VA ECMO in this. Uh, sorry. After VA ECMO, we had to put the uh, HeartMate 3 in this patient. So we can, we usually bring the patient from outside, uh, outside the max also from another hospital, from the another city, as well as from the another country we have brought. Recently, we brought a patient uh, airlifted. We put the patient at over there, brought to our country from Nepal. So, and the another thing which is similar to the MACA ECMO, it's a Centrimag and it's, it has shown even better results. This uh, Centrimag can be used either for the heart or as a ECMO when you put a oxygenator in the circuit. So it can be used as a post cardiotomy shock or post transplant or anything which causes a sudden drop in the uh, ventricular function. So this is how it looks like. And, uh, and this is uh, how the machine works. It's basically one of the uh, best pumps uh, which is available in the market for a Centrimag pump. So for they, the, the HeartMate people, they have bought this and they use the same technology upside down for the HeartMate 3, which is the most successful element so far available. And this is how it works, a uh, centrifugal pump. So uh, it can be used as a RVAD, it can be used as a BIVAD, or it can be used as a ECMO. So this is how bedside it looks like. And uh, most of the times they are used as either bridge to recovery, like the patient comes in a very sick state, you put the patient on ECMO, uh, whether Centrimag or ECMO, and then patient becomes better, you can send the patient home like uh, myocarditis. Or bridge to decision, because when the patient comes in with a 60 BP, 18 lactates, you don't know this patient is going to survive or not. So you put as a bridge to decision if the patient survives then you can use it as a bridge to another device means permanent device or as a bridge to transport so decision is more important than the incision so when to put the patient like either the cause has to be reversible pulmonary cardiac or cardiopulmonary the cause has to be reversible and anything to be gained by the conventional treatment because this is a major undertaking you cannot be putting in everyone <clears throat> i mean if you have hammer everything looks nail it should not be that because uh, this is also the ECMO is also has its own complications so you need to be putting in a patient where it is uh, you cannot conventional treatment is not going to give benefit and the neurological status also has to be good because sometimes the patient is already hypoxic brain damage and you're going to put it everything gets better and but the patient doesn't wake up and limited any heparinization contraindication like esophageal varices or present GI bleed you cannot put the patient on ECMO. So rescue therapies are meant to be put in a dying patient, not the dead patient. So, and the main um, uh, 
success of the short term mechanical circulatory support whether it's ecmo or centrimeg or impella or tandem heart or balloon pump is the time of initiation you, you should be careful it should not be that you have put it and it will work <clears throat> the another few permanent devices when you have come out of the state and you cannot wean from centrimeg or from the ecmo then you can go for heartmate 23 hardware or uh, and jarvik or eva heart and this is how it looks like the inflow cannula at the ventricular apex pump and outflow graph this is a heartmate 2 and this is a heartmate 3 heart and uh, through your body uh, heartmate 3 this is uh, one of the most advanced pump so far available with the very good results and uh, we are expecting it 13 to 15 years and it has shown survival almost equal to heart transplant so at some point this is going to be the main therapy the hwad is again it's a third generation device uh, it's a centrifugal pump so it is a uh, heartmate 3 and heartware are almost similar and the heart hwad is even smaller pump uh, with a minimum uh, higher risk of uh, uh, brain uh, strokes uh, with the, this device the another is paracorporeal uh, device which if you need a bivad but nowadays hardware is available as a bivad so we can use uh, for both the ventricles right and left ventricle heartmate 6 is basically heartmate two heartmates uh, in the body so uh, left and right ventricle so and the another device available is in cardia which when you both ventricles they are failure and sometimes when it's a rupture you have no other options to even correct those ventricle you can cut the ventricle and put the total artificial heart with a straight line ecg you are still surviving and uh, we have few patients uh, we operated this, this patient was operated in 2016 he's been doing fine this patient was operated in 2015 he's been doing fine for the last 7 years this was also operated uh, in 2015 and after 22 months we could remove the alvad as a bridge to recovery it's been doing fine and uh, you can see most of the people believe that after putting alvad or doing transplant they remain like bedridden or some they have some confinement issues but uh, you can enjoy your life uh, well this patient has two factors before alvad and now he has five so he, and he's been he's comp- uh, he's now in sixth year of alvad we did on october 23rd 2015 so now it's running sixth year on alvad and uh, and uh, this lady uh, every year she celebrates her birthday as a day of surgery and this guy is uh, now he was 69 9 and now he's 74 75 year old and he's doing fine and uh, this person from iraq he he had 20% ef and he was he had one wife now he has three so its quality of life is really good this guy is a mechanic from kazakhstan he's been doing fine for the last this lady is 81 year old when we put the device in and now she's 83 and uh, standing is, is her son he's is from md in germany the another um, recently we did a seven year old kid she is the youngest kid of asia pacific on ventricular assist device and if you see she is she is carrying a bag as in the back controller and batteries this guy is again from iraq is a 42 year old guy we did a recent lot of observers also come to our center from other countries to see this this i already mentioned 46 year old man with the so brother of one of our orthopedic surgeon we we put a bed as so the ecmo and then for 22 days we could not wean off and then we put a heart med 3 in him and he's doing fine the another guy he's uh, one of the mla of uh, congress is 56 year old gentleman and uh, this and the only thing which you have to give is uh, acetrom as a mechanical 
to keep the INR close to 2.5 because this is a mechanical pump. A lot of people ask me the advantage of endocrine cyst device over transplant. After the age of 65, usually we don't do heart transplant, but LVAD can be done at any age. We did at 81 and 83 year old in US, it was done, maximum was done in 89 year old so far. High pulmonary vascular resistance when the PVR is more than six roots unit uh, transplant is contraindicated, but you can do ventricular cyst device. Nowadays, it's another indication to do a ventricular cyst device. When your PVR is high, you put a ventricular cyst device. Within 18 months to two years, the PVR comes down. And this device has reduced the rate of heart lung transplantation because in heart lung transplantation, you are transplanting three organs, two lungs and one heart. With putting only ventricular cyst device solves most of the problems of transplant. High susceptibility to infection, which is more very common in India because post-immunosuppression, you develop reactivate the TB tuberculosis. That is why now Corona, anyway, you try to avoid the immunosuppression because you want to increase your immunity or that. So ventricular cyst device is one of the another option. Overweight patient, more than 120 kg patients where you don't find similar kind of donor. So ventricular cyst device is option and device is readily available even for the like international patient. You come and get the device done. But in India, they, see any, any country, if you go to another country, less likely you will get heart. So we also do a lot of heart transplantation at our center. I'm not going to detail recently. Last month in December, we did a two heart transplant. And uh, for heart failure, basically medical therapy, AICD, BIV pacing, and VAD, and sometimes transplantation. For more information, you can go to my website, kevalkrishan.com. And for more information or any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. I uh, We can now have the platform open for any queries or any discussion question that anybody wants to have with Dr. Kewal. I will just uh, unmute the participants so that people can have a conversation. Hello, sir. Good evening. This is Parth here. Yes. Sir, that was a very interesting presentation and many things to be learned in this presentation. Sir, my question was, uh, what about irradiated blood to use during transplant? or leukodepleted blood? Because I had studied somewhere that in transplantation, we use leukodepleted or irradiated blood. So what are your comments on that? See, many times to avoid the antibody reaction, the reactions, um, because the PR, a panel reactive antibody titer increases. And whenever we, even for the before transplant, when you are checking the PRA, if the patient has got blood transfusion or more than six months, you usually check PRA because this increases the chance of rejection because of the antibodies. That is why to prevent the rejection to the patient, you use irradiated blood or such kind of leukocyte. Leukocyte reduced because to avoid the se severity of rejection if the patient is developing. That is why we avoid T T4 and T8 cells to, um, mm -hmm. that is why leukocytes are re removed from that. Yes, sir. And uh, if the patient is a sickle cell anemic patient, then uh, is it possible to do transplant or uh, any, any special treatments or else just normal blood transfusion therapy? I think blood transfusion, blood exchange is important because uh, transplant also, but if the sickle cell patient, they develop some thrombosis of the coronary, the, it, will, it has the same implication as the normal heart for the allograft also. <clears throat> So better to save the heart for the other patients than sickle cell. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. That was so much helpful for me. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other questions? All right. If you have, you can write me anytime and uh, you can go to my website, sure. and then 
and there are a lot of uh, material available related to transplant cell beds and stuff so sir i have a one question uh, with you just a vikas karna uh, sir uh, i just want to know the success rate of elvet sir after this implanted see i have been in this field since 2006 uh, from mayo clinic and it used to work for 18 months and uh, the heartmeat one and then heartmeat two came that work used to work for 3 to 7 years and now mm-hmm. heartmeat three which works for 13 to 15 years so with the progress of the technology this uh, uh, no no problem with the progress of the technology this uh, improvement in the survival is also there at the same time there is a reduction in the uh, complications also like with the heart mate too there was a lot of gi problem gi bleeding problems and uh, thrombosis problem which are not there in heart mate 3 there is stroke rate is very less so lot of things are getting better with the improvement in the technology also So any possibility, sir, in down the line, in the next two three years, that uh, uh, devices come into the price technology so that Indian patient get the benefit of that. Any possibility that it can become in the price? There were total thirty nine companies that tried to make trial, right? But only three or four companies which are actually successful. Basically, two of Abbott and this uh, uh, Medtronic, because uh, most are the Japanese company, Eva Heart or Jarvik, because. this is a life saving thing and you cannot take risk on a even it's a substandard thing so we are also trying to uh, come up in india with this similar kind of thing like those chitra valves they are really working fine but sometimes because of the industry reasons i don't know because it has we have seen uh, the the senior people those who have put this valve like 15 years ago to, or 10 years ago they say they are really good they are working fine but somehow it is not been uh, advertised that they are good so like in india now the like maryland and other companies indian companies they are coming up not only with the good products but also with the good uh, motive that we need to uh, expand these things so now probably will happen in india that we may able we may be able to make a 20 lakh stuff and then we can it will be for everyone and unlike this is a 75 lakh device cost to the indian patients so. right thank you so much sir thanks a lot uh sir i have one query uh, well, like uh, we come across so many cardiac surgeons uh, who do cabg and valve replacements uh, but there are very few who can do the transplant Yes, and uh, when we when we speak to them, they say that you know we really require the we really require a training programs and we really require a you know hands on so that if we can train on this, uh, we might go and uh, start performing. So, what would be your advice to those surgeons who wants to or willing to go for the transplant? See, see, there are two reasons. One is they are not trained or they have not seen, and it is a bit different uh, physiology. as well as post operative management you go back to the medical field because nowadays with the valve or with the coronaries you don't require much medical knowledge than precision of doing it and they are standard procedures you can do that any like you have done it and you go home with the transplant or ventricular assist device is the same situation like 20 years ago the cardiac surgery used to be done like you have to have a passion spend lot of energy spend your like you are wasting all your time in the hospital to save just patient and nobody would like to do that so it's a very painful thing to happen so okay. if you can if any surgeon can have time for that pain and passion then should follow this yeah so we until would like to have standard, uh, until it becomes a standard that you are do done transplant like bypass surgery and you can go home yeah that that so, is still you, time so we don't know training uh, you know in in the max hospital we have the provision of training those surgeons who are willing to go for this yeah we can have, but the problem is they, they can tell the people that but a transplant it's only few hours like now i came to know like one hour from now it's in the night hour so we have only 3 or 4 hours to go okay yeah so 
if somebody would like to come and see then it's okay nearby or even far from the distant place and they uh, they come by flight and they just come and watch that's fine we have no problem many people come as observer for elvets also great sir fine this 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 information would be very useful for those inspiring surgeons thank you do we have any other questions for dr keval oh. hi sir very good evening i am abhilash from yeah. mumbai uh, sir i just wanted to know uh, what are the uh, uh, this thing how you decide that uh, you have to keep patient on elvets or any other this device or a patient has to go for the heart transplant what are the deciding factors see one is if you have a biventricular failure then i would go for transplant if you have a univentricular failure means left ventricular failure then depends upon if you are above 65 you have to go for elvet and if you can afford like international patient they cannot get heart or the patient in india is like if you are expecting that he will not be able to get this heart soon then one should go for ventricular assist device and anyway in the future the way the ventricular assist devices are developing they are going to be the main stay for as a like treatment ventricular assist like 13 to 15 year with the if you go for heart transplant then the problem is that you need to be taking immunosuppression lifelong it's almost uh, 12000 to 20000 per month cost of the immunosuppression at the same time complications related to immunosuppression with a ventricular assist device you don't have many complications and i have also seen if five patients of transplant and five patients of elvet if you can make out these patients are transplant because if you are taking nine tablets every day that a bit kind of patient look then elvet patients that is they don't have this problem so so and another is if we, the affordability of the patient also like they can they if because transplant is close to 20 to 25 lakhs somewhere and elvet is 90 lakhs so affordability is also one of the issues okay and so these are things when uh, we have already uh, suffering from the disease and what are the things we have to do so we cannot develop these disease so those things if you can uh, share with us so that will be very helpful for each one of us okay yeah so so the patient who require ventricular assist device or transplant the ejection fraction is less than 30% with symptomatic you are coming in and out of the hospital if you can avoid these things like uh, let don't let the like mi happens but which is not in our hand the follow up on the coronaries or you can get an stress test echo done so, so that you can early find out the problem then developing a massive mi which leads to ejection low ejection fraction if we can prevent that you can prevent the obesity or thyroid problems or diabetic hyper diabetes hypertension which they ultimately lead to failure see at the same time we are very careful and we take care of all these things also but at the same time our life expectancy is also increasing from 47 to 57 to now 70 so up to 80 years how the, this heart has to work for 80 years and heart was working for like 63 years average so now we are falling into that uh, era where your heart is working for 80 years so some or another kind of problem will happen for sure so mm. that is uh, this aging factor is another reason to go for ventricular assist device thank you very much sir and uh, yeah this and uh, another just to prevent the coronary disease and heart related problems so basically you the baseline heart problem has to be prevented right thank you sir uh, i'll just uh, keep the forum open for another few uh, brief moments if if there are any questions coming in 
good part is this is already on YouTube, so anybody can refer it any time at point, and then also get back to Dr. Kishan. Yeah, then not a problem. You can you can send me email or you can. Yeah, you can go. This to program website. is already recorded, sir, on YouTube, so it is there for. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's good. I'm I'm really thankful to at least Indian companies that they are coming up with because we have very good doctors and engineers, but. Uh, somehow the industry has to bring two together to make things in india so it has to be affordable to everyone basically and i sort of agree and i'm i'm really glad the discussion we had before the program about your participation in making this happen and bringing all your experience yeah. from you know uh, beyond this uh, country's borders to india and to enable the patients so congratulations and all the very best we hope to meet at some point maybe at some junction yeah. we could sort of collaborate but i think one idea that is take i could take away from this conversation which rohit mentioned if we could find people who need to understand transplant and all these related things and possibly max is one center where we could possibly start suggesting people so i think that's something which we'll take back if there is anybody we know whom to refer them now so thanks a lot for the time thank you for valuable lessons today thanks a lot all right sir Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, sir, for taking out time. Thank you, everyone, for attending the event, and have a great evening ahead.